Hello everyone, welcome back to the uh, remake of Quest for Glory 2, Trial by Fire. So, we're back here because I restored my game and I didn't retain the time that I was out in the desert. Uh, but we had just gotten the, uh, the in key. And what I'm actually going to go ahead and do, uh, since uh, the day is ending on day one, but um, our stamina is kind of down. Actually, our health is fine, but our stamina is down because we were fighting with Yuhura. What I'm going to go ahead and do is come here into the inn and sleep until evening. And even though that's really not a very long time because evening wasn't far away, still that sleep has replenished our stamina. We're back up to full stamina. So let's go ahead and rather than continue on with the game, let me go ahead and wander out into the desert a little bit and um, and I'll show off some fighting with some of the monsters. Yeah, we already saw this guy talking about how grand it is to fly in a car, but let's talk to this guard real quick. Uh, maybe they granted a happy evening. Okay. Let's not make the thief sign out. Actually, I don't think it lets you. Yeah, it doesn't even let you try. Let's go ahead and talk to him. His name is Abdallah bin Tahir. Uh, he doesn't have much in the way of daily news. Uh, it is said that in Rasir it is death to break the smallest of laws. Alright. And I asked him about Shapir, but he actually starts telling me about the duty of a guard in Shapir. Oh, and then we can ask him about all these things. I don't think there's really any... Yeah, he doesn't have anything much to say about any of these. He just tells us where these items are. Aziza's house has a, an eye painted on the door. Uh, Adventurer's Guild, the Astrologer we found. These, it is foolish to ask that of me. Okay. Uh, the desert. It's a very dangerous place. Yeah. And dunes are the waves of the desert. Um... The terrible Ulgulls, what you would call ghouls. I wonder, is that some kind of, uh, is that Arabic for ghouls? Anyway, yeah, so we can talk about the scorpions, uh, which I call scorpions. Oh, he says scorpions carry nothing of value and are best avoided. That's not true. You can get their tails and, uh, sell them to Harakatar, of course. Take caution, Effendi, yeah. Ghouls, uh... Basically, this is just, uh, I mean, this is all good advice, but there's really not much. Oh, the Saurus seller is going to be here tomorrow, he says. I've not heard one who can talk faster when trying to sell a Saurus. He must be a Jew. Uh, caravan, yeah, there'll be a caravan to us here in 16 days. Okay, and the Dervish. The Dervish knows everything that goes on in the desert. Okay. Uh, and here he talks about scarines, and you can ask him what a scarine is. It's the distance from here to over there. All right, so this guy, I know I clicked through these quickly, but this guy really doesn't have anything very interesting to say, honestly, fairly well. He really uh, just gives you fairly basic information. I'm not going to bother with him too much. These are the star formations. Uh, well, at least this one was the star formation that the astrologer was talking about. It's the Dark Hand. And funnily enough, uh, I know it sounds kind of stupid, when I was young and playing the original of this game, somehow I always saw the Dark Hand as being these things coming down as looking like claws, like a clawed kind of hand grasping at something. And, I don't know, maybe the greater color depth of this remake makes it stand out better, but it's blatantly obvious now that, you know, this is the thumb of the hand, and then these four things going up are the fingers. But somehow I didn't see that when I was a kid in the original. I kind of saw these starry spikes coming down as being, like, claws grabbing for something. And this, of course, is the, uh, the saurus, that, uh, pinkish purple star in the middle is the eye of the saurus, and this is the snout of the saurus on the left hand side, and that's the back of its head, and there's its neck coming down. And, uh, it tells me about the blazing stars, I want, yeah, here we go, the stars here appear to form a dark hand. Alright, so let's go ahead and, let me save my game again, uh, let's go ahead and see what we can find, let's see if we can find some monsters. At night, the special monsters that come out are jackalmen and ghouls, and then the monsters that you can encounter at any time, day or night, are pterosauruses and scorpions. So basically, at night, you can encounter one of those four things. And I'm not going to go out too far. If I don't encounter anything, I'm going to just backtrack like that. Oh, here we go. Whoa! Uh, that's 
five jackalmen. Wow. Okay, this is going to be an interesting fight. Let's go ahead and take him on. And as I mentioned before, my fighting style is basically just to whack things repeatedly. Um... The sound effects that these jackalmen make when you hit them are interesting. There's that one sound effect which I swear is exactly like the sound of a car alarm. And once you kill one of them, you basically have to wait for one of them to jump in front of you like that, and then you can start hitting them again. That sound there, that sounds exactly like a car alarm going off. Um... One interesting thing that can happen in this remake that didn't happen in, in the original is the Jackal Men may actually start to gang up on you. In the original, they would all be perfect gentlemen, or Jackal... Jackal gentlemen, gentle Jackal Men, and just line up one at a time to fight you. See, see that, that guy is fighting me now, and I can't even really properly attack him because I'm fighting the guy in front of me. So that's something that they added in the remake, uh, which... I guess could be good or bad. I mean, in one way it's a little more realistic, but at the same time it's kind of... Um, obviously it makes it harder. And I don't want the... Honestly, they've, they've made the combat, in my opinion, a little too difficult in this remake, because, bear in mind, I'm playing this on the easiest difficulty setting, and uh, it's taken me this long to defeat these guys. I mean, granted, there are five of them, which is quite a lot. But still, you know, it, it should be just basically the work of two or three swipes and you're done. That's pretty much how it was in the original with a character of my stats. And they've really made the combat a lot harder now. Which, you know, again, I, I don't really know how I feel about that. It, I understand that some people probably wanted a greater challenge, but they could have given those people a greater challenge by just turning up the the uh, difficulty slider, but for people with a slider all the way at the bottom like me, they, they should make it pretty easy because I don't play this as a fighting game, I play this as an adventure game. I don't want to spend this long just fighting monsters, I don't want it to be this difficult. Yeah. Oh well, I guess it could be worse. I mean, obviously I'm taking them on fairly effectively, but alright, and we got three points for beating them because we're a fighter. All right, let's see. Let's uh, click the eye on them. Passerby might wonder if there's a rugby ball underneath. <laughs> yeah, they're all piled up in a heap there. All right, let's see. Seven denados and 84 centimes for our trouble. All right, not too bad. Let's take a look at our stats. Oh, getting better. Our weapon use has already gone way up. Our strength is better. Vitality. Yeah, the stats are looking good. Stats are definitely going up. Let me go ahead and see if I can get into another fight. Let me rest. So we've rested for an hour. Don't feel like resting anymore. Uh, let's see. I'll save again. And let's see if we can find something else out here in the... Uh, in the desert to fight. I think I'm just one screen east of the city of Shapir. Let's see if I'm right. Oh, no, I was wrong. Oh, here, oh, more of them? Oh my goodness, this is gonna, this is gonna be crazy. Well, all right. Um, this is, actually, this is gonna be kind of boring. I mean, this is really, taking on five of these guys at a time, this, this is just gonna drag on. I'm sorry, this is, I know this is kind of silly. Um, I don't even know how to run away. What's the... How do you run away from a fight in this game? I'm not going to run away from this, but actually I'm, I'm, I'm... probably press escape or something like that. I'm not even sure. I don't even know what the key is, but oh well, whatever. Let's see how quickly we can get through this. I think the remake also increases the likelihood of encountering a monster in the desert, which... I also don't think that I'm too fond of, because I admit that in the original Quest for Glory 2, it was actually quite seldom that you would encounter a monster in the desert. You could walk, you could easily walk through, uh, like, 20 screens and not encounter one of them that was routine. 
and some people might say that there wasn't, you know, that doesn't create enough action, but I kind of liked it because it made going into the desert to do what you needed to do easier. And now it's kind of like, well, you know, I, I keep... Random battles are kind of a thorn in the side of RPGs, or have always been for me. I've always had complaints about random combat because RPGs sort of degenerate into just way too much fighting and not enough of character interaction or environmental interaction or anything like that. And one thing I like about the Quest for Glory games is that they sort of minimize that aspect of it and are more adventure games than RPGs. And with this remake, they've sort of made it more RPG-focused in style than uh, than, uh, than before, and so there's a lot of these battles that you have to get into. Alright, so we beat them. Let's go ahead and quickly see what uh, what kind of loot we can get. So 17 Donatus, not too bad. Alright. Save one more time. Nice. Alright, and we'll call that a video. Thanks for watching, everyone. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.